you're watching the free version of Silhouette Essentials. For projects and footage, head to BorisFX.com for the premium download. We are back. We're going to be taking a look at the third in our Silhouette Tracker options now. And this is the Mocha Tracker. And before we get too deep into this, there are actually two places where we find Mocha Tracking. We find the integrated Mocha Tracker wherever we have motion tracking, whether that's in Roto nodes or the Tracker nodes or wherever else you're going to find tracking. But we also find it as a node unto itself, which is the Mocha Pro node. And this is a much bigger application than just tracking data. We will be coming into Mocha Pro in due course. And all of the things we learn about Mocha in the tracker, we can use when we're in the Mocha interface as well. I'm just going to lock my planar tracking data in the object list and let's come back into the Mocha tracker. Now, just like the Silhouette planar tracker, we need to define an area or a shape that we're going to be tracking. And I'll just create a, a shape here. Go back into tracking and we have a few of the same options available to us as we had in the planar tracker. We can choose which color channel we're going to track. We'll keep this at luminance. We can select the motion that we're going to be looking for, whether it's small or large. But generally, you know, unless you've got a locked off camera, which is just shaking just a little bit, we're going to keep motion set to large. The next thing to look at is what kind of motion we're going to be tracking. This is pretty much the same as we saw earlier. So we've got translation, scale, rotation. Also bringing up the shear and the skew, which is kind of analogous to the affine tracking we had over here. And finally, we have perspective, which is the one we're going to take. All of these other things we're going to leave at either auto or the default settings. We don't need to worry about them. And let's track forwards. And we'll just leave it to track through. When it's finished, you'll see over in the object list that like the planar tracker, it creates up a layer for us to store the motion tracking data. So let's just double click on that. I will call this one Mocha tracking data. And if we look at just the, uh, the tracking points. We've got the same thing as we had with the planar tracker. We've got the five points, the center point, plus the four corner points. Let's do the same little tricks we did previously. Come up to our stabilize, go to Roto, Mocha tracking data. Let's go to the, the front and hit play. And we've got a very similar result as we had with the planar tracker. The shot itself is pretty much locked off. We can see a little bit of the perspective shift um, in, the, in the wall here. And it's done a nice job at handling things like motion blur and the camera going out of focus uh, at times as well. If you're having difficulty tracking a shot, and not necessarily with the Mocha tracker, this, this actually works for any of the three trackers, we can use pre-processing as well to help us lock things down a little bit more. So I'm just gonna turn on preview here for a second. And if we go down here, we can do things like blur the image. So a little bit of blur can help to to take out things like noise or compression artifacts. We can sharpen, and this will sharpen up the edges for us, make uh, better edge details for us. We can change the color with contrast and gamma, again, to try to heighten up the, uh, the differences here. And finally, do a denoise to get rid of some of that more subtle noise information. We always have remove flicker, which is there to help to sort of counteract any strong brightness flickering. And we can pre turn preview on and off. Preview, it's just for us. It doesn't affect the uh, processing. So even if the preview is off, all of the trackers are still going to treat the image as if it looked like this. Now, in my experience, pre-processing has a bigger effect when we're doing regular point tracking than when we're doing planar tracking or mocha tracking. But setting it up is the same, whatever tracker you're deciding to use. 
And of course, I can reset this by clicking on the reset button to the right of the parameter. Turn preview off and play this through one more time. So after this exercise, here's what we've got. We've got three different layers with different track data on them. The Mocha tracking data and the planar tracking data are giving us very similar results. And the point tracking data is pretty good, but it doesn't lock down the shot in the same way. And remember back to the last exercise, we also have layer one, which we turn that on and open it up is in fact our arm roto. So I'm going to call that one arm roto and close that back up again. In the next exercise, we're going to put these things together. And I'm going to show you how we can start to fix our arm roto together with some of our tracking data. So let's take a moment to let brains cool down again and join me in the next exercise.